we're going to continue our investigation of graph theory problems that are MP complete. A similar problem to independent set is somewhat of the opposite problem, which is a click. A click is a subset of a graph's vertices, such that every single pair of vertices in that set are connected. So let's look at some clicks. This is an obvious click. V1 for every pair of vertices, all none of them, there is a valid click. Uh, another easy example would be two vertices that share an edge. That is obviously a click. Let's look at some more complicated ones. Let's look at a click of size four. A click of size four here is V1, V2, V6, and V5. Notice that V1 is connected to two, six, and five. V2 is connected to one, five, and six. Six is connected to one, two, and five. Five is connected to one, two, and six. So they're all connected to each other. It is a valid click. Another valid click would be V2, V3, V7. Something that is not a click, let's see if we can find one, would be V3, V4, V7, V8. It is not a click because it is missing an edge between V3 and V8 and is therefore not a click. So this is what a click is. Notice it's very similar to a independent set. So hopefully it won't be too bad to reduce the independent set to this problem. So let's write out the problem formally. Given a graph G and an integer M, does G contain a click of size M? Exactly the same as the independent set, just we're looking for a click instead of an independent set. Our proof that this is MP will again be very easy. Given a solution for an MP complete proof, you're going to say, if you give me a solution, can I check its correctness? So a solution to the click problem is a subset V prime of the vertices. We need to define the sizes so we can talk about them. Given the set, we need to first verify that it has the correct number of elements. After that, we check each pair and check whether or not the edge is in E. The only difference between this proof uh, is click, uh, is that we are checking whether or not the edge is in the set of edges or not. The, it, for a independent set, we were checking whether or not the edge wasn't in there. And for this, we're checking whether or not the edge is in there. So everything else is identical. Obviously it has the same runtime. Therefore it is an NP. So simple problem it seems, right? Well, let's prove that it's NP complete now. Prove that's very much not a simple problem. So... In order to do that, we're going to need a couple of definitions first in order to describe what we want correctly. So our first definition is going to be a complement. We're going to want a definition to talk about how the click and the independent set seem similar, the act of having edges and not having edges. The thing we're going to talk about is the graph complement. So the complement of a graph is another graph with the exact same vertices. So we have my graph, they have the exact same vertices. But if there is an edge in G, then there is not an edge in G bar and vice versa. If there is an edge in G bar, then that edge does not exist in G. This is our set complement before a graph. We're effectively finding the complement of the set of edges. G bar is essentially taking the complete graph and then removing all of the edges that are in G. And that's where we make G bar. Not necessarily the way you want to think about it but this is what the graph complement is. Let's see how this is going to help us though. Let's look at some clicks over here. A click in this graph we already talked about is V1, V2, V4, V5. Over here, V1, V2, V4, V5. Huh, that's an independent set. Let's look at some other ones. So another click in the second graph is V2, v3, v6, v2, v3, v6. That's neat. It seems that every single click of g bar is an independent set of g and vice versa. So let's try and prove that. That seems like a very natural thing to prove. And then once we have that, maybe we can use that fact in our proof that the independent set problem can be reduced to the click problem. That is our methodology. It might be the case that if you were proving this on your own, you would just need to do this somewhere along the way. It's not obvious that this is what you would want to do on your own. This is just me making the proof look pretty. So I have a lemma for this, which says that if V prime is an independent set of G, then it is a click of G bar. 
how can we prove this? I will go through this in sort of two different ways here. We will see. I'm going to let V prime be an independent set. We're going to start by assuming that V prime is an independent set. And I need to show through the definitions that I know about that it is a click. So for it to be an independent set, every pair of vertices in V prime, it must be the case that they are not an edge of the graph. By definition, because it is an independent set, every pair of vertices is not an edge. But now, be by definition of complement, if something is not an edge of the original graph, it must be an edge of the complement. That is the definition of complement. Therefore, every pair of vertices in V prime, UV is an edge of the complement. So if every single pair of vertices in V prime results in an edge in G bar, then V prime must be a click of G bar. I wrote this in a slightly different way for the alternative way, which is that if V prime is a click of G bar, that you can go the opposite way. What we want for this lemma is not this statement, but that we have an independent set if and only if we have a click. That is what we want. So when you're doing these proofs on your own, you're going to want to prove this, that it goes both directions because we want that the answer is directly mappable, that I get a yes and a yes and a no and a no. And one way of doing that is by having an if and only if. Here, the proof is identical going the opposite way other than the fact that the complement of the complement is the original. So that is the one thing that we have. The negation of a negation is the original. The complement of a complement is the original. The exact same thing occurs here. So we prove that V prime is an independent set of G if and only if V prime is a click of G bar. I'm going to use that in our proof. Now let us prove our proposition we claimed up here, which was that the independent set problem reduces to the click problem polynomial time. I have a typo here in my notes that I will mention. This should be proposition nine. Hopefully we updated the near version. It's not too important. All that matters is the claim in the proposition. This says that the independent set problem reduces to the click problem. Again, remember, if we want to show click is NP complete, we need to take some NP complete problem and reduce it to click in polynomial time. So we start by saying, what is an instance of the independent set problem? Well, the independent set problem, according to what I have up here, is a graph and an in integer K. So I let G be a graph and K be an integer. So we have an instance of the independent set problem. What we're going to do is by lemma one, we know for a fact that graph G has an independent set of size K if and only if G bar has a click of size K. That was our lemma that we proved. Having proven that lemma, we know that if we map G and K to G bar and K, we take G and replace it with G bar, that we, that we can find an independent set of GK if and only if we can find an, a click in G bar. And the sizes are the same. I, so I'm transforming my independent set problem to a click problem. If I can find an independent set of G, I can find a click of G bar. That is what we are showing. And this reduction from independent set to click takes big O of N squared time to compute G bar, big O of n squared time by computing the adjacency matrix and then twiddling all the bits in the adjacency matrix to switch them from zeros to ones and ones to zeros. Now take big O of n squared time. So this reduction takes polynomial time and it works that if I have an independent set, then I have a click. And if I have a click, then I have an independent set. The reduction requires the following two things. If yes to part one, you need yes to part two. And if yes, and if no, this is all Q1, and this is all Q2. If no, you need no. Alternatively, a, a equivalent reduction is if you have yes, you need to have it if and only if you have yes on the other side. That guarantees that yeses map to yeses and yeses map to yeses, which is the same as saying yeses map to yeses and noes map to noes. A picture people often use for this is you have problem type Q1 over here. Problem type Q2 over here. There's a big old domain of problems. Some of these problems have yes. Some of these problems have yes. Some of these problems have no. And some of these problems have no. What you want is that all of the things up here in the yes domain 
get mapped to this, and all these things down here in the no domain also get mapped to no. An alternative way of doing this is instead of showing that, what we just did is we showed that this top arrow goes both ways, which therefore necessarily all of the no's would go to no's. So there are two ways we can do a reduction. Either show if the answer is yes, it goes to yes, and if the answer is no, it goes to no, or do what we just did and say it goes to yes, if and only if it goes to yes. So if you're proving this, this is why I recommend that you have a, something like it is an independent set if and only if it is a click, because then it, you can not need to worry about mapping the nose to nose. It's a little bit easier typically to do that. So I recommend doing the purple line here where you say it's yes if and only if it's yes for when you are doing these proofs on your own.